Three, two, one. We are live, guy. How's it going? Going great. Yeah. It's um again autumn in um in Stockholm. Again, so we are back in uh, <laughs> September. Yeah, it, it was it was a very short and intense summer. Very nice. One day. I guess today, even though there could be a what's new section, because I think in the last week the market. Um, has crashed a little bit, just a little bit. Um, I guess we're not going to talk uh, about that for now. And uh, we decided that we wanted to do uh, four stock valuations. Um, so did you say that uh, you you wanted to start with um, t row price? Yes. So maybe first of all, what's, uh, what do they do? What so T Row is uh, an an asset manager. They they um, provide like um, advisory um, ad, ad administrative service for funds. Uh, you know they they have for example mutual funds and portfolio managers. Um, yeah. Okay. So financial services, but in that sense, and they they manage money. And so they make money because they offer these services and then they charge like a fee or an interest on Yeah. Them. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see. And they, they, they are pretty big. I mean, um, what's their, first uh, of all, the... their market cap? Ah, okay. In, in terms of market cap, uh, yeah. that, that's a good question. I, I was thinking about AUM, you know, assets under management. That's also, um, that's also interesting. Yeah, asset under management uh, about one point seven trillion dollars. Okay. So, so they manage a lot of money. And what about um, the market cap? Can we see it on uh, on value line? Are they, are right. They Twenty billions, two hundred billions. What's their market cap? So their market cap is twenty-seven billions. Okay. So they're not a huge company, but. Uh, definitely a large cap yeah definitely large cap stock um and i guess we'll follow the template that we that we showed last time the, the simple yeah. uh valuation model that we already used and we introduced the next time we're also gonna introduce a simple um discounted cash flow uh, cash flow uh, cash flow model, model. yeah uh, but okay let's um let's do it with just this. Do... so these numbers that I see in the table are the mm -hmm. numbers that you put before we started to stream, right? So these are the yes. correct numbers. Th these are the correct numbers for t -Row, yes. Okay, so what I see is that this is, of course, um, the price. So this $122 per share is the price on the 14th of, uh, of May, so today. So basically when the market closed uh, yesterday. Yeah, actually, it, it's a cool um feature of of um, uh, google sheets is that you can call the google finance api yeah uh and um and so it, it updates the price yeah uh, as yeah. of now so yeah so th so this is the price of yeah, uh, yeah as of yesterday and then i'm seeing that you put a time horizon of um five years uh, is there a specific reasons for um for this instead of, uh, for example, picking 10? So the, the point is this, when, when, we, um, when we say uh, that, um, when we forecast uh, future growth, um, we should be more and more conservative uh, the more uh, the, the, the longer the time horizon. So the longer the time horizon, the more conservative we should be. So um, five years are essentially enough just to use the past growth uh, reduced maybe by, by a factor. Um, uh, but if we are going to... The, uh, so I don't think that no no one can know the growth of anything 10 years from now let's say but if we say yeah three five years then we there's some inertia i think in in some companies not 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 in all companies for sure but in these big and stable companies uh, i think it's reasonable to 
to just extrapolate. You know, Howard Marks says most forecasts are extrapolations. I don't try to be more, uh, you know, smarter than that. So I extrapolate and um, and uh, I apply a conservative um, uh, factor. I multiply the the past growth uh, with a conservative factor, and that's it. Okay. But um, so, so suppose that the time horizon were, for example, 20 years. Okay, suppose that we say 20 years. But then it's very unlikely that we have any kind of confidence about the growth rate that then we put um, in the in column E. So what I'm what I'm um, okay. So what I'm understanding is that you do a five-year um, analysis because you want to be more confident about the numbers that you're going to put in at the yeah. same time you do hope that you're going to buy these and hold it forever yes uh, yes maybe by redoing every now and then exactly. this valuation every, five yeah, years every, after. Few, yeah. every few years okay sounds good and so here i see that uh, re regarding the past which again is the easy part of all of this uh, we have uh, a growth in terms of revenue per share of 11% per year. Yeah. Cash flow per share, 17%, EPS, 18%. This is the yes. an annualized uh, growth in yes. the last five years yes. from value yes. line. Okay. And then again, the multiple, the average multiples for the revenue, uh, it's 4.7. For the cash flow is 11 for the um, EPS, so the PE ratio is 14, whereas the current multiples are 3.4, 8, and 8.7. So from here, we, we can already see, and correct me if I'm wrong, that there has been a huge, quite a quite a large correction in the last few yes. months. Yes. Uh, because we, we've gone, for example, from a PE of 14 in the last five years, uh, averaged out over the five years to 8.7 now. So it seems pretty cheap. Yes um and and yeah basically this is the easy part then for the future i'm seeing that you used 9 10 and 11 percent is there a, a particular reason why uh, you chose these numbers let's say okay th 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 there are two reasons uh, one is uh, uh, let's extrapolate the past and let's be conservative about the past so actually your question for example on on the market cap is very relevant uh, here, for example, because um, you know one, one thing one thing is to extrapolate ten percent for Tiro, but imagine that that we repeat this um, for Apple. Um, you know how likely it is that they could grow ten percent per year, given that their market cap is three trillion dollars, right? So okay, but so in some sense, okay, in this case, they they are quite small. They they could grow, you know, I don't know, ten times, uh, so that there's no there's no problem um, uh, with these growth rates in principle at least. One aspect is is this is just to extrapolate the past and and be conservative. Another aspect is that there are a bunch of analysts out there, so you know Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger they are not very kind <laughs> with analysts, uh, but but still. I think that uh, we can at least compare what they say. I use, you know, anal analyst expectations or forecasts as like a, a negative warning to me. So suppose that um, that I say, okay, let's extrapolate, uh, you know, revenue per share at nine percent, and then suppose that I see some analysts saying, no, 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 the, the growth rate will be 2%. That is a very big red flag. It means, okay, I was missing something. But if they say, okay, the growth rate will be 20%, I don't care. I still use nine. And then I see that for the multiples, you're using basically more standard numbers. Um, yeah, more like between the their, Yeah, yeah, maybe a little bit a little bit lower slightly lower than the past uh but, right but, yeah yeah but basically these are the usual uh multiples that we see for for such a company or i think yeah. i see um 4.4 for the revenues 10 for the cash flow and 11 for the eps and yes. then by following the usual model 
we we end up with the end price which means the price that the stock uh, will have in five years yeah and then we can kind of calculate the kager in the next mm -hmm. five years that would bring us to that price yes. right. and we see an average kager at the current price of 15.9 mm. percent which is pretty sweet mm. it's pretty high mm. Yeah, uh, and this is mo mostly due to the to the recent drop, right? Uh, quite significant drop in in, in price, uh, and we talked already right. about this compression in, in multiples. And right. uh, I see that as usual, you also put the projections if the fi the, the the price uh, fall even more to one hundred and ten dollars mm. or ninety eight dollars per share, which you know would give us a kager of eighteen percent, twenty one percent, or twenty four percent. Yeah, but just a few days ago, it was uh, trading at uh, 117. Yeah, ah, think, okay. I think 16. I think, ah, 15. I think okay. you had a limit order at 115 and it, and it oh. placed. <laughs> okay, very good. Very good. It, it's good that you remember my limit orders. <laughs> and on top of that, uh, which is very important to mention, they also have a current dividend yield of yes 4.1 percent yes which and, is kind of amazing yeah and what is this right. um so because i see that here you you still put growth in the dividend so this is the growth in the right in the dividend that the company in, pays the, so this is the point right that now the price went down and therefore the dividend yield went up they are i think a dividend champion they are a company that has been able to grow his, its dividend for decades. So we can be pretty confident, let's say, that uh, that they are not going to cut their dividend. Of course, a anything can happen in the world, right? But let's say with, with a reasonable likelihood, they will not cut. So in yeah, as you said, in dollar terms, we can expect that um, it is stable and it will grow somehow. And um, you, you project a growth of the of the dividend of nine percent per year. Yes. And how can you do that? Again, uh, in the past it grew thirteen percent, and somehow we know that. I mean, just it's math. If other fundamental variables, so for example, earnings or cash flow, they grow at some growth rate the dividend will be linked to that growth rate, right? Because if it were below that growth rate, then the yield would go down, steadily down, right? I see. So in some sense, we, we could just take an average of, of the growth rate that we assumed above, or maybe something a little bit more conservative. W what I do is that, okay, if the current yield is 4.1 and it grows it, and the dividend grows with a, a, a CAGR of 9%, what will be, okay, the dividend in the future, okay, five years from now, and then what will be the yield? So the 3% the that you see in, in column H, yes. that is, like the current dividend growing at nine percent. Yeah, it makes sense. Divided by the price, yeah, that the, the the end price. Yeah. So this is actually and pretty also, pretty sweet. And, and also, yeah, and also there is a double check that we can do, and the double check is so is the dividend yield that we get far from the past or you know the dividend yield in the past. So in this case. It, we are assume we are like forecasting three percent, and in the past it was two point seven percent, so it's kind of reasonable. Sure, and then I see the the final check that we uh, talked about last time on the uh, return on total capital. Uh, so you put here um, a thirty percent, which I guess is the averaged uh, return on total capital in the last five years, which is pretty high. Um, yes, and the Kager for the next five years with our assumptions and at the current 
price is 18.9 so we have a difference of around 10 percent in, in the yes. kind, of, kind of like in our favor i would say here in the sense that yes, the valuation yes, yes. kind of underestimate uh the return on total capital so maybe we would have we could have some hopes in a way that actually the return on the long term would actually be 18 indeed or maybe even higher than that exactly right. because of their enormous uh, capability in terms of ROTC, right? Exactly, exactly. So this is this is not to say that we believe that it will grow at 30, but again, it, it's another... Um, it's kind of knowing that they have room Double check. That. Yes, right? yes. They have room to increase their earnings at that rate. Because this yeah. is exactly what it means, right? So if they have some capital, so cash or cash equivalent or assets. So it's that, 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 that plus equity, that plus okay. equity. Okay. So they invest that or they do whatever they want. And then you compute the earnings that you got. And by doing the ratio in percentage, that's going to be your ROTC, right? That's how it yes. works. Yes. Mm -hmm. How are they doing on uh, share outstanding? Mm. I guess they're pretty stable and maybe they have a few buybacks. That's my guess. Okay. So first of all, this is why we use revenue per share, cash flow per share, earnings per share. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. So this is already taken into account there, right? Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's a good question. So let's check actually. Uh, okay. They are buying back. But so this means that Quite significantly the mm. earnings per share are going up because yes. the earnings are going up but also because they are decreasing the uh the number of out shares outstanding right 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 this is actually a very good point that you know the quality of the earnings is not the same if you grow your net income or you just decrease the, share your sh the number of shares in this case they, they are growing their net profit. That's pretty good. And at the same time, they are buying back shares. So this is like, this is the dream. <laughs> yeah, so like a large portion of their increase in earnings is coming from the, the increase in net income. And then of course, there's a, there's a part that is coming just from the fact that they are decreasing the uh, the numbers of, uh, of shares outstanding, right? Right, right. Okay. Cool. Um, I guess uh, that's all for Tiro. As usual, and as we write in the description, this is not financial advice, but we have fun uh, evaluating uh, this uh, nice uh, company. 